Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm responding to this carnivore dieter's six month blood work results, which she is very proud of, it seems. And we're gonna have to examine these results, which are, in many cases, shockingly high. I've been doing the carnivore diet since December of 2022. Between month six and seven, I got some extensive blood work done. So today I'm going to share those results with you along with some interpretations. So all in all, I am happy with these numbers. But she has, you know, 10 minutes of preamble about cholesterol, for example. So yeah, the cholesterol denial is gonna run deep in this video. And we're talking about 39 year old Jenny Midditch, who's a YouTuber who says, after her husband asked if she wanna go on the carnivore diet, she did her own research, literally said that, and then decided to go on the diet. But in my opinion, frankly, she has been brainwashed by low carb docs and low carb influencers into believing things that aren't necessarily scientifically accurate. So while she's probably just trying to be healthier, of course she's going out there and reiterating claims like this. Now total cholesterol is a completely arbitrary number. It does not matter. When it's seen by itself, there's really no point to it. And she talks about LDL particle size a bunch, so we'll do a deep dive into that. We're also going to hit on some carnivore heart disease cases, cause you know, anecdotes are apparently what people respond to nowadays. Anyway, let's go. And this video is sponsored by Thrive Market, which has a special offer of 30% off your first order and a gift worth up to 60 bucks. More on that in a little bit. First, I wanna talk about the evidence for why this woman is just sort of in a low carb vacuum chamber in terms of where she's getting her information. Here she is. I did a bunch of research on blood work, uh, specifically pertaining to blood work while on a high fat, low carb diet. And I found a bunch of excellent resources. I've linked them all below. You know, she cites some scientific papers, one for example, on why cholesterol levels don't matter for people on a low carb diet. But looking to it, we're talking about an opinion piece, you know, the lowest on the hierarchy of scientific evidence. The reasoning of their cholesterol numbers are so high that a doctor might tell them to stop their diet, <laughs> lol. Clearly connected to the low carb community. I mean, at the end, it gives a shout out to Thomas DeLauer, who's like a low carb, high meat diet pusher, he interviews carnivore dieters, and even interviewed the CEO of Butcher Box. Oh, he's Butcher Box. We low carb people have slightly different blood work than the general population, and that can be concerning for some physicians, but we are going to talk about all of that today. I think the words she was looking for were most physicians. And this again brings me back to that whole idea with Dr. Sean Baker, where I joked that he was, you know, transforming into a lizard man or he was a lizard man or something, because in order to believe that all of these results that we're gonna get into are healthy, you essentially have to believe that you're a different species. You know, she touches on some basics of cholesterol, like giving a science lesson and one of the major red flags is that she relies largely on like low carb infographics. From all of the low carb doctors that I could find, they couldn't care less about your LDL cholesterol as long as your other numbers are good. And low carb doctors, eek. I should probably remind you once again, my daily video reminder that multiple meta-analyses show that low carb diets are associated with about a 30% increased risk of all cause mortality. Again, why Dr. Mercola quit his keto diet recently is that study in middle-aged people with low carb diets increasing mortality risk. And the main difference between her carnivore diet and other low carb high meat diets is that she's removed even more of the protective antioxidants. Anyway, before we go deeply into the myths and stuff that she talks about, let's just hit on her cholesterol numbers, which she waited later into the video to show. But she starts out with sort of her before eating a different diet, which she didn't really elucidate that much. This is from May, 2022. I was 210 pounds at this point, and I had been on the Noom diet for three months. And you can see from my numbers that everything looks good. A conventional doctor would look at these numbers and say, all right, that's good. So cholesterol was starting out okay. It was under 200, closer to 150 is better. However, her LDL even then was not optimal because it was over 100. But then we get to her multiple carnivore diet readings and this is where stuff gets pretty wild and freaky. Yes, it has an upward trajectory every time she gets it until it gets to 262, which is, over two times, like two and a half times my level. Uh, to that, she responds with that gem here. Now, total cholesterol is a completely arbitrary number. It does not matter. When it's seen by itself, there's really no point to it. And you can see that she's just reiterating low carb points, kind of like she's been brainwashed. I mean, it's like somebody sitting in a burning house going, 
temperature levels don't actually matter. Then she makes a claim which is just one of the most outright inaccurate claims in the video about the American Heart Association just also not caring about total cholesterol. The American Heart Association removed total cholesterol from things that they're concerned about. And so I'm just gonna not worry about this number. But she's conflating that with dietary cholesterol. And even then what she's citing is not accurate. She's citing an editorialized version of the 2015 egg board attempt to get cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern into the USDA dietary guidelines. It was in there for a second and then taken out. But let's look to this 2021 scientific statement on diets from the American Heart Association. They say things like, quote, healthy dietary patterns are inherently low in saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, etc." And quote, a positive relation between dietary cholesterol and LDL cholesterol concentrations has been documented. Still, the current US intake is similar to the historic 300 milligrams per day upper level. So they're saying that it was just like not necessary there's a bunch of weird politics going on with that, but either way you can see her claim is not accurate, doubly. In the interest of time, here are her HDL and her triglyceride numbers. She's happy with those. We're gonna go into HDL in a little bit, but what I'm really concerned about, as you know, is that LDL or bad cholesterol. Her LDL was, get this, 173, which is roughly the same as her total cholesterol was, before going on a carnivore diet that is disturbing and the fact that she doesn't think it's a concern is scary. And yeah, compared to my last test, eating a vegan diet, she has about three and a half times as much LDL flowing through her arteries at any given time than I do. Now to our sponsor, Thrive Market, which is a membership-based online market with a bunch of different food and even things like cosmetics. And I love it because you can search vegan. And so there's a bunch of vegan options that people might want to try but might not have locally, including a bunch of snacks, and they now have frozen stuff. And you can get a free shipment on orders over 49 bucks. And in case you're concerned, it is delivered with carbon neutral shipping from their zero waste warehouses. And that eco packing also doubles as combat camouflage. As you can see, we ordered a bunch of vegan snacks to share. And you know, I got my walnut butter fix, got some of these healthy peanut butter balls, some turmeric chai, and Carmi the dog was visiting in hopes of getting some Thrive snacks. She heard about it. And they calculated that on my $55 order, I saved about 10 bucks. Oh yeah. And the membership has major savings if you do it on a yearly basis. It's $12 month to month or just $5 a month yearly. So if you are interested in ordering some delicious food from Thrive, you can go to thrivemarket.com slash Mike the Vegan for 30% off your first order and that free gift worth up to 60 bucks. All right. And in order to justify these high levels, she of course has to do some crazy weird lipid panels that can be interpreted a thousand ways and she did the advanced lipid panel. Remember that a lipid particle size test counts the number of particles and then it sorts them by size and density. So we're looking for an optimal A pattern. Let me show you the difference between A and B. So these first two slides are A patterns. Now the optimal A pattern has a single large peak over the large buoyant LDL. This is what we want. Now the B pattern can look like this or like this. And this would be considered pathological because most of the particles are small and dense. I think this, so my hypothesis was confirmed. In every lipid particle size test that I've taken, I have the optimal A pattern. She says she has that nice, fluffy, large, buoyant, magical LDL that somehow makes you immune to heart disease. We're gonna look at that. She continues. My LDL particle number is a little high, but that varies greatly. Higher LDL particle numbers have been seen on a high fat, low carb diet. So all in all, I am happy with these numbers. You know what else has been seen on a low carb diet? Increased all cause mortality. Having been seen on a low carb diet is absolutely not a metric for healthy or lacking risk. Like how can you look at this page and go, awesome, all looks good here. I mean, high, high, high. <laughs> Anyway, let's go into the LDL size claims here because it really has been a low carbon carnivore talking point for years that this large buoyant LDL is just like, you just got little teddy bears floating around there in your arteries. However, we have to look to the research and one study that I've never seen low carbers even acknowledge is this one, which looked at some cardiovascular risk based on different particles. Yeah, that large fluffy LDL was similarly associated with heart disease to that small LDL and yeah, you know, 63% higher risk for more small particles and 44% higher for large, slightly better, but 44% is not harmless. 
It's like being stabbed by a slightly shorter knife and then concluding that it's healthy to be stabbed. And total LDL particles were way higher up there. More is the main thing. She talks about that pattern A being good and pattern B being bad. Well, this study looked at that and cardiovascular risk. And here is artery wall thickness, which is of course a measure of artery clogging and looking at LDL particle size. And yeah, you can see there's just a minute trend line as LDL gets larger, the risk goes ever so slightly down. What are you gonna get? Like 0 0.002 millimeter less artery clogging. But I think it's good for people to not just hear this from a vegan who they probably are like, oh, you just tried to save animals, he's horrible. <laughs> um, let's go to Healthline, which tends to have a low carb slant. They say, quote, well, smaller, more dense LDL particles may pose additional risks. It's important to note that all LDL particles can lead to arterial plaque regardless of their size and present cardiovascular risk. And to go even further here is a quote from pro meat low carb person, Chris Kresser, who will even debate vegans here and there like on Joe Rogan quote, well, it's true that small dense oxidized LDL particles are more likely to cause atherosclerosis. Large buoyant particles can also be harmful when their concentration is high enough. So yeah, when a group of cardiovascular professionals who dedicate their life to uh, fighting heart disease, like the American Society of Cardiology, when they say that high LDL is causal to atherosclerosis, no, there's no, unless that LDL be fat, no, it's just LDL is causal to atherosclerosis. Then she gets into oxidation, and it is true, a lot of this is born in truth, that smaller LDL is more prone to oxidization, but we had to ask how much more prone is it? I've never seen anybody cite any figures, so I did a little bit of a dive into the original research that is cited even by studies talking about it. Here's one of the original studies we can trace the oxidation claim to. And yeah, they broke LDL up into three categories, LDL one, two, and three, with LDL one being the fluffiest. They literally centrifuged them out, they separated them, and then they tested their resistance to oxidative stress. From this chart, yes, the larger LDL one had a lower rate of of oxidization, but only about 20% lower. And in the end, there was only 8.5% lower total oxidation products. So no, I don't think I would bet my cardiovascular health being okay with a bunch of large LDL particles based off this data. Also, just learning about this, it's worth noting that the size of these particles is not even that different. You can see from this chart that we're comparing from you know right around 20 or just below 20 to 25 or nanometers, not insanely different, which explains the results and then also explains conflicting results. I mean, from this study in non-diabetic patients, at least, they found that there was no connection with LDL particle size and LDL oxidation. And last point on LDL oxidization, she points to things like sugar, but newsflash, just life can oxidize your LDL from this study. Aging oxidizes LDL. I mean, infections can as well. We even have like endogenous compounds in our blood that do it. And a great strategy to fight that is eating antioxidants, uh, which she's decided to not do. And quick reminder on infections from this large BMJ study, people on a low carb diet had four times the risk of moderate to severe COVID infections. Well, loosely plant-based people had 73% lower chance and at one point she says, oh, and people on a carnivore diet, they've gone things like coronary artery calcium score tests and they've been fine. So clearly they don't have any heart disease. No one gets heart disease on a carnivore diet. Many of these lean mass hyper responders have taken coronary calcium scans or CCTAs, both of which check for plaque in your arteries and they have none. Did you? This is something that I've seen used so many times in the low carb diet, especially by people like under 60, whether they're Sean Baker or other people going, look, my score was zero. I don't have any heart disease or anything like that. But just looking to a chart like this, coronary artery calcium seems to build up really in older age. You know, in the land where heart disease is our number one killer, even then people who are in their 40s, you know, over 90% of them have a score of zero. So not an impressive metric, but this is where I might as well throw in a couple anecdotes because I think that's what people who tend to choose a diet like this really respond to. And first we can go to that carnivore kid guy who, you know, he's a fit guy. He was active, you know, relatively young. A lot of people are following the abs. He's 
got the abs going on. He says, hey, the carnivore diet resulted in my you know, Widowmaker artery being 95% blocked. So obviously he went off the diet and you can just see his frustration thinking that he did everything right in that post. But clearly he was, again, brainwashed. Was his LDL not fluffy enough? We'll never know. Anyway, moving on to another case that is posted on this Alzheimer's forum. And even though it's just an anecdote, it has some compelling figures. We're talking about somebody who's in their 50s. They said they never smoked and they're physically active. And they were on the keto diet since 2015. And then in 2019, decided to go on the carnivore diet. And then in 2021, they had their first heart attack that was on the carnivore diet. And now the really interesting part about this is their right coronary artery at that time was just 10% blocked, but then another year of carnivore diet, they have a second heart attack, and this time that same right coronary artery is 99% blocked. Sadly, he didn't have a low carb doctor and they just didn't understand, so they made no bones about it. Quote, my high cholesterol was the cause, and with the evidence I have, how can I argue? He says, so to summarize, I had the gold standard test and no blockages were found one and a half years later on strict carnivore, full-blown heart attack. It's almost like animal fat clogs your arteries. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to quickly mention a couple things about HDL, because there's this idea that her HDL is high and that's good, and low-carb doctors, you know, they just want to see your HDL be high. Well, from multiple lines of evidence, HDL is not going to save anybody here. First of all, HDL-raising drugs do not help with heart disease, and also from the NIH, you know, summing up a study. Quote, scientists discovered a genetic mutation that raises HDL cholesterol levels, but rather than protecting against heart disease, increases the risk for it. That might be because HDL in high levels can oxidize as well. And to corroborate from this 2022 study from the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, quote, low HDL was associated with increased coronary heart disease risk in white, but not black adults with high HDLC, not protective in either group. Anyway, really quickly, let's move on to some other markers. She looks at insulin resistance. And this one, you know, I'm not gonna go deep into here, but is a bit sketchy. I mean, people have pointed out, quote, that LPIR, the metric she got, is an index that has not been FDA approved and further studies are needed to confirm its validity. And yeah, the guy who wrote that, which was in 2023, calls himself the keto doc, so hopefully you should listen to him. You know, it's using lipid metrics to estimate insulin resistance, which, you know, I don't think is ideal. And I have to remind you from studies like this, that high saturated fat intake, which she's of course getting from animals, can cause insulin resistance through, you know, direct damage. So while she might not be consuming any carbs now, most people will consume carbs again. They will quit, and then they're gonna have a horrible response to carbohydrates and end up worse off. That's my speculation at least. Anyway, moving on to C-reactive protein, which is an inflammation marker. Hers, she says, is great. It's, it's optimal at 0 0.70, but I have to question if this really is optimal, especially for her age. Look into a study like this. The female average under 40, which she is, is 0.34, really half of what she's at, and it's similar in the 40 age range, 0.38. So you can see by this chart that she has, you know, a CRP of someone over 60 from this study, at least. You know, and we can even find studies like this one where smokers had an average lower CRP than she does. And my CRP was below detectable, but that wasn't a high sensitivity test, so not really fair comparison. But as she says, she doesn't have a chronic disease, but high LDL over time can sure give you one. To contrast this, I did a 2019 video on that carnivore to vegan diet swap, which showed that the person who was originally on the carnivore diet started at a CRP of five, which is officially high. And then he dropped down to one on a vegan diet. That's right in line with, you know, trials like this one showing people lowering CRP on a vegan diet. Next, she says she looked at nutrients, but this was really a limited look. And I am glad that she looked at folic acid because uh, Michaela Peterson, who eats a carnivore diet, was deficient in this. She is long-term on that diet, and this is only six months, so who knows where that would go. But remember how James Blunt got scurvy on his carnivore diet, which is, you know, relegated to a sailor disease of ancient times? Nope, that's a result of not enough vitamin C, so maybe these carnivores should start getting vitamin C tests. <laughs> Ridiculous. But most nutrients were simply just not tested, so we don't know. Anyway, one test that was obviously not done was her environmental footprint, and from that recent Oxford study, my quick estimate using their numbers was that a carnivore diet has 25 times the emissions and the species extinction as a vegan does. So that's worth mentioning. Don't even get me started on the extra animal deaths directly. 
And to emphasize the good dietary choices that she's been led to take, well, now she's just starting the BBBE challenge, which is a diet that just consists of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Yes, one quarter of her diet is made of class 1A carcinogen, processed meat. That alone should make you question <laughs> the health claims that she's making in this video. Anyway, in the end, I do believe she's trying to be healthier, but she's just, you know, tapped into the wrong experts. And it really is a result. She says her husband wanted to go on this diet, so she was following that. She then came up with post hoc justifications for her health results, for her blood results. Now, my husband had been badgering me to try the carnivore diet. He really wanted to try it, but he wanted me to do it with him. But again, her LDL cholesterol is just absurdly high. LDL again being causal to atherosclerosis and those larger particles, which aren't even that much larger and don't even oxidize that much less are clearly not going to prevent the negative effects of her high levels, which she even admitted her LDL particles are high. But she wasn't concerned because other low carb dieters have that too. No, that's not a metric. Again, we have that higher mortality on low carb diets, which from that study that scared Mercola was specific to high animal fat, high saturated fat, low carb diets. And as we've seen from many studies, more plant based low carb diets even associated with lower mortality. So it's this animal fat and these animal products that she's eating that drives that. Anyway, I hope she sees the light that this is not a healthy diet, yet there are other diets focused around unprocessed foods, like plant foods that can get her the results that she wants without having these insane you know, blood marker risks, LDL. And of course, if you'd like to try out Thrive Market and take advantage of their offer, you can click the link below. And also feel free to let me know down below what you thought about all these results. If there was anything I missed, there's more stuff I wish I could cover, but you know, time. But that's it for today. Feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.